where was I? Oh yeah. Um, we have to calibrate the first night's light light images. Now this, I just thought I should tell you. The what I'm doing here is not going to be done. Not going to be finished tonight. I'm only doing first half of the pre-processing. Um, this because this will take hours and hours to, to do this. I can't stay up all night. <laughs> so the first one we do is we're going to calibrate the lights, the actual images from the first night. And there's a hundred and a hundred and six or something in here. We're going to calibrate all of those by adding them into an image calibration. Output will go to light. We call them lights, by the way. There are other files you can take, uh, photographs you can take, darks and bias. Bias you can take in one and it will last you six months. This is all for noise removal. Darks remove the noise from the heat noise from a camera. Which I don't need to worry about because I did that, but that's a totally different subject. So yeah, the calibration for the for the first night's lights will go in a folder called Cal, and all this is done to keep organised, because otherwise you can get severely out of sync with yourself. Master bias on there, master dark. Don't have one because I don't do dark files they're a bigger pain in the neck to do than um, flats for me because um, master dark or dark files are created using what you basically do is you take a photograph the same length of time as your lights but you have to create them at the same time because of the camera temperature but you put the cap on the telescope or camera so you're recording nothing just blackness um, but what you're actually photographing is over because you're using long exposures you're actually photographing the heat noise yeah i added master bias i'm adding master flat now sorry about that i lost lost track of my thoughts um it's first night wasn't it master flat if you look down here you'll see master flat which is the one we created Check out the right place. Yep. Uh, so click that and it will create our starter files for this first night. But as you can see, the, the processes take a long time to, to actually do. It's not a two minute thing creating a nice astro photograph. And to be honest, I have no clue what this is going to look like. Um, <laughs> Because I have I some of the images. What I do is, um, before I do the stream or before I make a video, I'll have a look just to see if it's reasonable. Um, but this one, I've not even looked at. Um, have all the light files there, but I've not even looked. I've not even run it through any processing. So it'll be interesting to see what this turns out like. So we just got to wait till that. Uh, that does these you know till it calibrates these target frames and then what we'll do is we'll move on through all the processing for the first night what i'll do is i'll get i'll do the first night imaging second night's imaging up to a point um, because what we have to do from those two nights we have to actually align all the images together because when i put the camera back on the telescope it's going to be very slightly out not going to be looking in exactly the same location, so we have to align everything together so that it looks like it all came in one night. Anyway, I'm just going to uh, turn off the mic because I need to go and grab a drink. I'll be back now. Yeah, back to all. Okay, that's me back. <laughs> Lubricated the throat a bit, getting a bit dry there. Uh, is this still processing? It's done 24 out of 60. I'm uh, guessing you're seeing how long these uh, things actually can take. Um, with this particular PC, I actually had to reduce the amount of cores 
that the CPUs used by the uh, Pixin site because it was causing my stream to go weird. What I'm doing here, by the way, so I'm just processing um, a nebula. It's called the Elephant's Trunk Nebula. Um, I'm just started calibrating the light images. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, to be honest. <laughs> I didn't a year ago, but um, you pick it up quite quickly once you start. What I'm, <clears throat> what I'm actually doing here, I, I've actually produced the images. Um, when did I make them? Uh, 20, there they are there, 27th of August I did these. And I've got uh, two nights worth, 26 and 27th. It's about 106 images that I have to actually process. And they can be, it, it's, it's quite time consuming because there's a lot of processes that you have to run through. Now, what I need to do here, I need to, is this, what the stage we're in at the moment is called pre-processing, where I'm basically aligning and calibrating all the images before we actually get into the to the interesting part of where you try and make it look nice using the software oh really <laughs> astro's fun it's not fun when it's cloudy and raining like it is outside at the moment horrible out there i'm i'm in the netherlands so uh we've had um quite a few reasonable night which is why i managed to get all this data um, i've got quite a bit here to process cocoon dumbbell fish trunk these are all the names for the for the different images some of these i've already done but what i'm doing is i'm processing um a nebula called the elephant trunk nebula so we've come up to 59 out of 60. so we're on gonna hit our last image on calibration. And at this point, we don't. Yeah, it's almost there. No, this is only the start. <laughs> this is just the calibration. This is, we now have to do cosmetic correction. OK, um, and I'll show you why we need to do that. Right, that's that's calibrated those images on the first night. And if I show you um, what we're actually doing, I'll open one of the images. We just calibrated. Doesn't really matter. Any one of those will do. So that's one of the images that we just calibrated. Um, and I've got to put a stretch on that, a temporary stretch. See all those white dots and black dots? They're hot and cold pixels created by the camera. And I have to, obviously, these are the stars. These. But you can see all the white dots. One there, look. Black dot there. They're all over. There's hundreds of thousands of them on the image. What we have to do is remove those using a process called cosmetic correction. Click these under processes and cosmetic correct. Uh, that's it's just a it's just a Canon 450D um, with a with the, the infrared or the red filter removed inside it so that anything that's red coming down from space, my camera doesn't block it. So it's just a, an old 450D. What I do um, with those cameras, um, I trawl around the, um, the second-hand camera site. Um, there's one here in the Netherlands and there's one in the UK when I go back to the UK. And you normally find them a second hand one with sort of five thousand to ten thousand shutter shutter exposure or shutter activations uh for about eighty to a hundred pounds and then what I do is I pull it apart and take out the red filter, put it back together, pray it works but still and uh that's that's what I do and uh dedicate the the problem with using a dSLR for long exposures. I talked about dark frames earlier, is that when you take a photograph with a long exposure, the, the circuitry inside the camera generates heat. And this heat comes through in, as noise from your image. Now you can remove this noise using dark frame. Basically, you throw the cap on your telescope or your lens 
and you take photographs that's the same at the same exposure but if you can't keep that temperature constant then there's no point in doing them because the noise will change as the temperature changes a dedicated astro camera which are around well they start at around a thousand euros up to ten thousand fifteen thousand euros they actually have a cooling system in them so you can drop the temperature of the inside circuitry down to around minus 40 degrees centigrade below ambient and then you can do your dark frames because you've got a constant temperature all the time but for a dslr we don't do it or i don't do it it's not there's no point um what i do is when i'm guiding between the exposure i have the telescope or the guiding software runs a process which is a dither and what that does is it moves the telescope slightly so when you process the images it cancels out the noise in theory so what we do now is this cosmetic correction and what i do is i add all those files from the lights folder and the cal so all of those files go in like that output directory within cal i create a folder called cc cosmetic correction okay and I tick the CFA box. Now, CFA, I could put the mouse over. Um, that stands for color filter array or a Bayer matrix. Bayer matrixes are things, are, are things that color cameras have to produce a color image. Um, the ideal way to do astrophotography is you actually use a black and white camera and you do three times or twice the number no, actually three times the amount of imaging on the same object you do red green and blue using filters and also one luminance channel um, so you actually have four sets of images you have to process and then you build it all together and that produces your color of course using a black and white camera if you know anything about cameras it doesn't have a bayer matrix on it so it you can actually pull in more photons onto the camera chip a, um, a Bayer, a matrix on a camera is, is it's not as efficient as a black and white camera if you're doing space. So I have to tick that CFA and I'm going to tick use auto detect and hot and cold sigma that's the red, that's the white and the black dots that you saw. I already know these settings because I've done this so often with this same camera. I drop these down to 1.5. And then I just click the, uh, the apply button. And that will then cosmetically correct all those images and put them in the new folder called CC. So what you're doing here is building. Yeah, that's what you do. If you get Photoshop or even paint and you put red, green, and blue blocks on the screen and then cut and merge them together, you'll get white. So that's, that's how you construct an image when you have a dedicated astro camera. You have filters, red, green, and blue. You have a luminance filter. And if you really want to go for it, you also have hydrogen alpha filters, oxygen three filters, uh, or sorry, sodium two filters. So you take all those images and then you use the software to build the, the final product, which can take hours and hours. I mean, it takes, you can, I know people that have taken a, an astro photograph that's taken them months sometimes years to make because of everything that goes into it. The results are really good, the ones I've seen, but uh, they can take a long time because you're building the image up all the time. It's not like snapping a photograph on your phone or, or on, a, on a camera. No, snap, you've got the image. You, it takes, takes a while. Um, this this um, color, this color, not color, cosmetic calibration, is quite a quick process but we're at 12 out of 60 so that'll just chew through all those and produce cosmetically correct files which we then have to move on and debayer so we have to debayer the images to sort out like what, what, what we were just talking about with the um with the filter on the front of the camera we have to run through that with a debayer and we debayer each file but the, the interesting thing about this, when, we've, when we go, get into the second part of the processing, which is, this is, as I said, this is pre-processing. 
when we get in this into the second part um what you what you can do is you can add coordinates to the image which is really interesting because when you've added those coordinates at the end what you can do is actually annotate the image and it will show you all the tiny little galaxies that you wouldn't otherwise see a little circle around them and names them using this software it does this um, and some of the galaxies are incredible that so i've got some photographs of some very very tiny galaxies half a billion kilometers away <laughs> it's like 500 what's it, 500 million sorry not kilometers 500 million light years away so the light you're actually seeing when that left that place we were still fish we didn't exist so you're looking back in time at least so yeah very very interesting some of the, the tiny things you can see it's not so much the great big images that look fantastic with all the color and everything <clears throat> sometimes when you look into your images you can see all these very small things which you know, i like to try and identify it's really cool isn't it i mean you think about you know the speed of light we all think it's very fast and we're looking at our screens now and that's getting to us instantaneously but when you point something up into space that stuff you're looking up up there looking at up there it's taken a long time to get to us yeah i mean i can show you some pictures at some point of stuff that is a long way away but we're never going to those places and the people if there's anybody up there that's going to come to us they're never coming to us because even if you could travel at the speed of light you get a thing called time dilation and um if you traveled at the speed of light to an object a certain distance away when you come back to earth or wherever you've come from thousands of years have gone past but what you're coming back to is gone it's sort of kind of mind-boggling when you get into the science of it okay looks like we finished um you can see how much it was actually correcting here 107 no 1 million millions of loads of pixels that's a million isn't it? yeah lots and lots of pixels there so yeah that's um that's the first stage that we do to actually get rid of all those nasty dots that are on the images the, the, we run another stage a bit local later on called local normalization and that really cleans it up but we don't get to that yet that'll be for another day probably friday because um, there's a lot to do here before we even get to that stage. Local, local normalization is actually run a lot later on when we've star aligned everything. Anyway, next process is where are we going? The Bayer. Now, if you, if you notice on this screen here, it's RGGB, and that's the actual Bayer pattern on the DSLR camera what this does is it sorts all that out so we're, we're starting to now turn the, the images into a color image rather than being a gray image. so we need to add the files from the cc folder this is all of those you can see the file extension the actual process puts an annotation on each image so this first c is uh, calibrated and the second the cc here is cosmetically corrected what we do is we create a folder in there called I call it DB, the DBayard. Add all those files in there, and you can actually see here. Look, uh, the temperature is actually listed in the in the file, thirty one centigrade. <laughs> That's hot. Um, we do we do the cos calibration, the cosmetic correction, the debayering okay on each of the days and then we do a subframe selector process on those files and that combines both days into one set of uh, into one folder and then what we do is we do a star alignment on all those files okay and then you do the local normalization and then you do the image integration and then you do the drizzle integration so there's a 
we're about halfway through on day one. It's quite a lot to do. But as I said, I've never, I've not looked at this image. I have no idea what this image looks like. Um, a lot of people that make videos for YouTube, myself included, will go through before we make the video to make sure that what we produce at the end isn't a load of crap. Because, you know, you can end up with something that looks bloody awful. Yeah, you've got to go through. There is software out there called Deep Sky, Deep Sky Stacker, which does all this in one click. But um, I, actually have, I actually prefer to do it this way. I feel like I'm more into it, you see what I mean? Rather than just clicking it and walking away. Uh, it keeps sort of my mind in track as to what's going on with the, the image. And if something goes wrong, I know where it's gone wrong. I've been doing this with PixInsight about six months now. So it's a lot of people say PixInsight is complicated. It's hard. It's um, I show you why. If you look at processes, there's all those processes, things like Pixel Math, where you can actually do stuff with the separate pixels um flux calibration i don't know what this stuff is to be honest i know what pixel math is because i use it sometimes <clears throat> but it's a lot of this stuff i don't use at the moment so i've no idea what to do with it but i use what i know and that's that's what this pix insight is for it's got a load of processes here and you use you do what you you know what you know and it produces the results um, anyway, uh, the bay of this file, I need to put them into a, an output directory, which we already created for DB. And that's it for that, that particular process. Or we'll run off and do these 60 files. But if you're thinking about, um, you know, getting yourself a setup to do Astro stuff, as I was saying to Schmiggles earlier, you don't need to go crazy with telescopes or anything you can use a dslr camera and a lens and as long as you keep the camera still um and you don't need you know you don't do too long exposures um you'll be able to photograph the sky especially if you're in a dark location uh, or you can go to a dark location you'll get you'll be able to photograph the milky way or whatever you'll see it the camera will capture it even though your eyes can't really see it your, your camera will will get it if you go over <coughs> excuse me a th certain amount of time on your exposures what you end up getting is star trails which is art in on itself in itself because obviously the earth is rotating so the stars appear to move and if you don't track or guide your camera or telescope then you'll get star trails but you can you should be able to get away with i would say depending upon the sky quality 15 to 30 second exposures but then you'll, you'll actually have to move the camera manually to keep up with the, the earth rotation so it's it gets quite technical with all the all the stuff you need to do I and mean, some people i know they do 30 minute exposures it's like wow <laughs> it's like opening a shutter for 30 minutes and just gathering light how are we doing here uh, it's chewing through these quite fast. New PC is on the cards. I think I'm going to get a Ryzen 7. Um, because when I started streaming, the first uh, streams that I did, actually, I couldn't, it, it actually affected the stream so much. Because PixInsight, you can actually adjust how many cores it uses of your processor. And I had it on all four. Well, I'm using an, only using an i5 to do this. And, um, when I was doing a process, my stream would go really, uh, it would buffer too much. So I've actually reduced PixInsight down to only use two of the cores, which um, seems to work better in terms of the stream, um, not in terms of speed. Um, tracking's not that difficult. A lot of people say it is, but it isn't, to be honest. You just get a, a small telescope, 50, uh, 50 millimeter telescope, and stick a camera in the back, bolt it to the top of your telescope, and um, play around with a piece of software called PHD, which will guide, once you've locked onto the star and you've learned how to use it, it will guide the telescope. It sends 
pulses to the mount. How are we doing? Up to 111. How many did we have here? Let's have a look. Oh, five. Created. Yeah, we're nearly done. Right, so there's the um, the bayering process complete. What we do now is we can't go any further with this particular set of images. We have to do the other set first before we do the subframe selector. So we need to go back to day two. Uh, let's just take a look and see how far we got on day two. Uh, let's just have a look. Right, okay, so going to the 27th. Um, yeah, we did all that. <clears throat> 27th, so we need to calibrate these uh, lights on the 27th. Process, all processes, image calibration. I know this is really boring and tedious, but this is what you have to go through. And it's really nice at the end of it all when... You get that one single image. I'll just show you what I'm, what I'm talking about. Uh, this wizard nebula that I did. Um, it wasn't that good because it was only, I didn't think it was come out very good, but it was only about 30 images or something like that. But um, this was one that I processed. I think I processed this last week. But that's. The wizard nebula i don't know if you can see him in there uh can you see his uh he's sort of holding his hands out like that one of his hands is just there and his hat's here and his eyes here and his nose is here astronomers figure out always figure out a way well we as as humans we recognize patterns don't we it's all about the patterns <clears throat> so this is what you know people see these nebulas and they they say, oh, that looks like a wizard, you know, holding his hands out, casting a spell or whatever. But let me just calibrate these first lot of images. I need to reset that. And then we'll go to the 27th. And do all those light images. It's not so many this time. Master bias, don't need a master dark, I've got a master flat. Master bias, we need to add in that master bias folder, a uh, file, sorry, from there. Output, go into 27. Lights, cal. I hope you're seeing here how organized you have to try and be with all your files. There's you end up with so many and you can very easily you know lose your lose where you're going on this and we'll just calibrate those images um so next process uh cosmetic correction on the files from the 26 cal folder uh, sorry to be sick yeah, uh, 27 cal folder. Yeah. So, folder, you see, tick the FA box, auto detect, sigma, sigma 1.5, 1.5. All good and take that button so we've got 37 of 45 on the um cosmetic calibration or cos oh, sorry cosmetic correction get the name right and as you saw before what we do is we we're going to debayer them or debayer the is once the debayer is done and what we do is we do subframe selection and Using the subframe selector, we add all the debayered files from both days, you know, one day, two day, three days, no matter, you know, depending on how many you've got. 
<clears throat> and then you can actually use the sub I use the subframe selector to actually choose the images that I'm going to put through into the final image. Hopefully looking at the data, you know, just on the on the screen here, it doesn't look too bad. So we shall see. See what uh, see what happens. And then once we've done the subframe selection, because using the subframe selector, what we do is we choose the best image. The actual software will show me which one is the best image to use. And that's used on the next two steps, the star registration, star alignment, and the um, local normalization to produce the images from there. Only oh, the, the alignment comes later. The alignment has to happen because um, even if you take a photograph, you see what happens is I explained about the dithering. Even if you only have one night's data, uh, because I've not done darks, between every image that I do, the telescope is twitched, if you like, to a different location. Very, very slight. So even if you do one night's data, you have to star align to bring everything back into line. And when you star align, that's what clears out the noise because the, the data is dithered. We're probably not explaining it right, but that's what it does. So especially on two days data, you, you have to do it because when I put the camera back on the telescope for the second day, it's not going to be in exactly the same position. It will be, even if it's a micron out, which I'm never going to get that closeness anyway, you'll still see a difference in the position of the stars on the, on the image. So we have to do a star registration. It's called star registration. So that's done. That's, uh, those have done. So now I'll debayer. Let me just show you. This, this is a star alignment process here. This is done to match everything, but we're not there yet. Um, <clears throat> so now we debayer. Those images from the 27th and the color, uh, yeah, from the CC folder. But all of those into our DBayer proce process. Create a folder called DB. Yep, 27. Yep, going in the right place. Auto, I need to change that to RGGB. And click the button there. Once this is finished, then I'll do the star, um, not star, the subframe selector once this is finished. Okay, so how are we doing? Um, um, 55. Ah, oh, not too long. About 10 more to do. Five more to do, something like that. Nearly there for this particular. Thank you. Um, nearly there for this particular part. Yeah, it should be finished soon. The um, This is what I was saying about keeping yourself organized. I mean, I've done images which have got, uh, I don't know, five, six days worth of data. It gets really complicated. Not just that, the hard disk space, I'll easily use um, some of the big images, 50 gigabytes I've used before now to process an image. And one I did of the, um, which one was it? I can't think, hold on. Let me just show you this. I think this image here, let me show you. This is my website. That image there, 
that I did. Uh, I'll show you in a second how big they are. But this image here, um, this was done with three panels. This is the Sadia region. This is actually, if you were to wanted to print this thing, it's actually three and a half meters high. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, let me show you. Let's, let's have a look. See how big the um, the sizes are. Uh, out of interest. Uh, where should we go? Um, I'm gonna miss, how can we show this? So if I go, if I just show you the properties on this folder, we're up to thirty-one gigabytes so far. Yeah, it was three and a half meters, something like that. It was insane. Um, it took a while, but this one's thirty-one gigs so far of of data. But a lot of it you can delete as you go. Um, because if you look in the folders, I mean, if you look at 26, we're actually done with all these. So you can actually delete them as you, as you go on. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, that was, uh, the debayed folder files were done for the 27th. Let me just double check. I'll yeah. So the debayed folders are, are, are done. The debayed files are done for both days now. One sim single image, that, that image of the Sadia was 2 gig um, in XIFSF format. Obviously in JPEG it comes down to, I don't know, 60 meg or something. So it's slightly smaller because it doesn't contain any data. JPEGs are a very lossy format and they don't contain anything really. But these XIFs, XISF files contain a lot of data within them for what's going on.